uh, change. But uh, if you look at this this thing, if you want to evaluate this number, this number, what matters in their theory is whether this number is odd or even. I'm saying that unlike Bismuth, this number is odd. In, uh, Bismuth satisfies this part. And in the, of course, I cannot look at the unoccupied part, so I cannot. What's trim? Sorry, number of problems. Trim is time reversal invariant momenta. Or should you just take any two? Yeah. It's all two or just particular? Uh, well, I mean, in principle, you should take ev every pair. Yeah, but it turns out with this type of reciprocal space, uh, you uh, only, in a hexagonal lattice, only gamma and m satisfy trim. K does not satisfy trim, if, especially if you have Dirac point. So, uh, so what uh, what we have found is that there's a large spin orbit splitting because, as Matthew pointed out, this on the tight binding we fit with our bulk RPS data is uh, we need a large spin orbit coupling to fit the data, so that confirms that it has large spin orbit coupling. But this is not unexpected. This month has large spin orbit coupling. Atomic, it's atomic origin. We confirmed, which Russians could never confirm, that bismuth in those doping, in those concentration is the band insulator. It's not, uh, there is a real gap in the spectral function. It is a band insulator. And we also confirmed, which could be done, theorists could have done that, symmetry flip band inversion is involved, which is trivial to show. Uh, because it's equivalent to pressurizing the system. In Xu Chang's system, it is equivalent to changing the well separation. And, uh, and then there is a uh, number of crossing is changing as one is uh, pressurizing the system. In other words, there is a topology change. So it satisfies all these things. Okay, so here are the hard numbers. Uh, band insulator, we isolate the massive Dirac point. You can fit it with a uh, equation like this. And not only that, m is a function of x. So we have not located the Dirac point, but we, based on our band systematics, we, know, we believe we know where the real Dirac point is. Uh, and um, so the final thing we want to check if there is spin texture on the Fermi arcs. That can be done with spin, uh, circular polarized light, photo emission with circular polarized light. So we'll, we'll be able to figure out that. Uh, this is work in progress. Okay, so this is our summary that it goes through uh, some sort of Z number change. Uh, in the band inverted regime. It just like it's very, it's just 3D analogs of uh, uh, mercury telluride quantum well experiment. Okay, so what are the future directions we plan to do? I mean, plan to pursue is we want to locate the real Dirac point and just play with it. So change, uh, uh, one, one way to change whether there is a real Dirac point without doing our best is uh, we dope it with tin or something and look at thermopower. Because if I look at thermopower, thermopower is very sensitive, whether my Fermi level is here or here. So if my Fermi level is here, then thermopower will have a, uh, it will have a positive sign. And here thermopower will have a negative sign. So by doing this bulk experiment, we should be able to locate actually we are already in the process of doing that, and we, uh, in fact, know it's near 4%. But don't you have other, huh? other surface states? I'm sorry? Aren't there other? Yeah, yeah, so, uh, surface state, but you can get rid of that by uh, 
changing the surface and bulk bulk area to surf, bulk volume to surface area ratio just look at you can look at the scaling this is actually uh, we are trying to do already uh, just look at samples measure do transport measurements on samples that has different area versus volume then you can look for scaling because then the surface and bulk contribution would be different mm, but my impression was that there is a so surface state, there is a Fermi surface. Yes, there is a Fermi surface, surface. So yeah. Wouldn't it, it dominate over any contribution from the Dirac point? Yeah, there, there is contribution. I mean, there is, uh, there is a contribution from there, but mm -hmm. we know the sign of the uh, carrier sign on the surface state, right? Because not, not all of them are whole like. Right? We can calculate what is the volume. Just count how many electrons are on the surface. And then, uh, then you can account for that. And also, if you make the bulk much bigger, then, uh, then you, you're dominated by the bulk state than the surface. Well, you're saying close enough to the Dirac point, and any finite system size, the surface will always dominate? Is, that, is, is there necessarily any reason for that? I thought Dirac point is already very singular. OK, so I did not get to talk about these other things, but we are into f in full scale. We have three PRLs on this compound, which came out this year. So we'll continue to understand this competition and coexistence of excitonic, Korn overhausers, uh, CDW, and superconductivity in this system. And we want to observe. Uh, quantum sp uh, fractionalization in that Kanoda compound. What, sorry, remind me what you can look for for that fractionalization. Oh, just uh, uh, look at the spectral function, whether it has two, uh, whether, uh, okay, so it's. Uh, actually, I have a slide on that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So if I, if I take out an electron, Right? Then I create this two topological defect. I want to then spin on and hold on. It, it, this velocity is scaled with t. This is scaled with j. Right? Uh, I'm not doing optical experiments, so you can ignore that. But uh, in a single band system, spectral function will have two branch if fractionalization has been realized in 2D. This has, we have done that in 1D, but I want to do that on 2D on. Anybody who claims to have a spin liquid, but it's important to check if that spin liquid is in a fractionalized phase or not. There photoemission on any organic? No. Uh, well, there is photoemission on uh, T TMTSF. Uh, it's, it's becoming possible. Uh, it, it, the challenge is how to control the dosage to save the sample and still get your experiments out. There are a lot of technical development in these days. You can do those things. You can even get close to doing nano ARPES. You can even, uh, I, I would say in five years from now, you should be able to look at these edge states by focusing your beam on the sample edge. But, but, but in the organic, where are you, where in the phase diagram are you trying to work? I mean, you have uh, to just undoped, undoped, undoped. No, I know, but it has in to the be, insulator. Has to be conducting, it? No, not necessarily. I mean, one can do L ARPES on undoped compound. There are many, many work. You can do ARPES on an insulator, you don't get yes. hard to build Yes. Well, it depends on the threshold, but these are sufficiently conducting. They for conduct example, well. for example, uh, well yeah, uh, say, for example, in pseudo gap or in other very, say, LSCO, X equals zero, there are a lot of ARPES work. You can you can uh, look at these lightly doped systems, right? The, the it has to conduct a little bit. It's little bit, right, it's right. enough conduction even at, well, how low in temperature is the, is the conduction good enough? I mean, no, you don't want to go to low temperature. Right, right. In that That's case, I mean, you want to have a, uh, you have to work at some finite temperature so that you're, you don't charge up. No, I understand. So how, just in practice, how low in temperature do you think you're going to be? Uh, for example, uh, 
uh, yeah, the yes, it, it should be it should be possible to work around 20 Kelvin. It's not very low temperature, no, but but if your J is large, and T or J are well separated to different very different energy scales, then you should be able to see that it's set by that. How well separated fermion and uh, holon velocity, spinon and holon velocities are, then you should, you're trying to measure band dispersion of two branches. Okay, so uh, every, exp all, most experimentalists want to develop a technique. I do try to develop a technique. And my interest is, I do both of these techniques, uh, but it turns out if uh, these techniques, you can put them into perspective how closely they relate to a fundamental system Hamiltonian. In other words, RPES is, this RPES spectral function is just very directly related to a system Hamiltonian through the first order green function. And this collective response says they are two particle correlation functions. They are related to the second order green function. So these are the most fundamental spectroscopies of condensed matter. And you know that uh, uh, in both RPES and uh, neutron scattering has been fantastically productive. And there is technical reason why that is so. It turns out to cover a large momentum range with neutron, you don't need to go to very high neutron energies. Uh, so that means since you do not need to go to high neutron energies, you can have uh, good uh, uh, relative resolution. That's why neutron scattering is so successful as a technique. RPES has been suffering from surface, but as I showed that RPES, they elaborate techniques how to separate surface and bulk states in, in all fine details. Uh, okay, so you can pull out uh, many papers that Many papers that uh, that has very large, high degree of citation on these two <coughs> techniques, but uh, I have arbitrarily defined this thing. This is and greater than equal to one paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a null, it's not a null set. Right, right, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, there is no single paper that has this level of citation with this technique. I have been working with this. This was my PhD thesis. Zero now. Uh, and I, uh, I have one of the most high cited papers, but it doesn't satisfy that. So I want to, so there is opportunity to develop. But as soon as it does, then you'll, you'll arrive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Okay.